how the heck do you do this? What? Am I supposed to know how to do this? Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Now, last week I uploaded a video that is more successful than any video I've ever uploaded in a 24 hour period. It's crazy. I took the higher mass portion of the GCSE, and before I uploaded it, I texted a couple friends like, I don't know if anyone's even gonna wanna watch this. I like the concept, I'm entertained by it, but will anyone else? Yes, uh, emphatically, you guys seem to love it. So today, to show a pretty good comparison between what students in the UK experience when taking the GCSEs and what American students experience when taking the SATs, I decided to take the math portion of the SAT. To make this as legit as possible, I have a number two pencil here, and I even got my very own Scantron specifically for this test. Also, I hope I'm allowed this, but I got myself some tea. Without further ado, let's go. First off, let's put the name on the paper. Evan Edinger, all right? I don't really care if we're using block capitals here. Okay, this ain't the UK. Today's date, it is Wednesday, the 19th of June, or the month first, guys. That is just how it is. 1919, isn't that funny? Exam. For fun. That's right, we're doing it for fun. And instructor, we'll just put your mom, okay? We're very old here. Now, same as last time, I'm going to have my phone here with a stopwatch. So, you know, I ain't fibbing. The first section here is only 25 minutes, and that is the non calculator. I'm pretty sure the calculator section is 30 minutes. And just so you know, just looking at this, this is the first sheet of the SAT. It gives you an entire reference panel with the area of a circle, the volume of a cone, we have the uh, volume of a pyramid. This is the stuff that you shouldn't be expected to memorize for a test, you know, as long as you know how to utilize it. In the UK, I'm pretty sure you don't get anything. You just have to have all these weird things memorized. Well, without further ado, let's just jump into it. Whoosh. Oh, it's double-sided. I forgot. Okay. So, if x minus 1 over 3 equals k and k equals 3, well, what's the value of x? Well, let's just sort that out by doing k equals 3. So, we have x minus 1 over 3 equals 3. So, we have 9 equals x minus 1, which means x equals, just bring that over, 10. Bam, the answer is D. Now luckily, this test doesn't matter about your work, okay? You just have to get the right answer. That's all that matters. Make sure it's fully colored in, okay? Don't have any mistakes. Next up, I equals square root of negative one. What's the sum of seven plus three I plus negative eight plus nine I? Okay, let's just make oh, like parts go together. So seven minus eight, what is that? Negative one. Three I plus nine I is 12 I. There's the answer, negative one plus 12 I. Basic arithmetic, folks. Off to a good start. Next up, we have three. On a Saturday afternoon, Armin sent M text messages each hour for five hours, and Tyrone sent P text messages each hour for four hours. Which of the following represents the total number of messages sent by Armin and Tyrone on a Saturday afternoon? Also, hope you don't mind, it is a crazy rainstorm in London right now, so you might be hearing the nice, ooh, ASMR rainstorm on the ceiling above. But, let's figure out. Armin, he sent M text messages each hour. He's in love. M text messages each hour for five hours. So, five hours. Uh, Tyrone sent P each hour for four hours. Which of the following represents the total number of messages sent by Armin and Tyrone on a Saturday afternoon? Th this shouldn't be difficult. M over H. I really make this. So M per hour for five. So how many did he send on a Saturday afternoon? How many hours are in an afternoon? Oh, for five hours. They only did it for five. He did it for four. So we're just going to do multiply that. We get 5M. There goes my pencil. 5M over H plus... 4p over h. P, yeah, so that, that should be it. You can't, they're not like terms, so it's just gonna be 5m plus 4p per hour. Oh, so the hours cancel out, because it's actually five for five hours. So the h's all cancel, so you're just gonna have 5m plus 4p. And that is my final answer. Yes, I'm pretty certain that's the one. Yeah, you wouldn't multiply them. So that c makes you fully color in the bubble. We're taking too long on these easy ones. Next up, Kathy is a repair technician for a phone company. Each week, she receives a batch of phones that need repairs. The number of phones that she has left to fix at the end of the day can be estimated with an equation P equals 108 minus 23D, where P is the number of phones left and D is the number of days she has worked that week. What is the meaning of the value 108 in this equation? Let's see. So, number of phones that she has left to fix at the end of the day is 108 minus 23D, where P is the number of phones left, and D is the number of days she's worked that week. So D equals days, and what's P? P is the number of phones left. P equals phones left, and the number of phones that she has left to fix at the end of the day can be estimated with that. So the phone she has left is 108 minus 23 times the days she's worked. So what is the meaning of 108? 108 is assumably just the stock, right? Kathy will complete the repairs within 108 days. Kathy starts each week with 108 phones to fix. That makes sense. Man, that rain is really coming down. Uh, Kathy repairs phones at a rate of 108 per hour, or Kathy repairs phones at a rate of 108 per day. None of those are correct, except for she starts the, the week with 108 phones to fix. That's B. It's 108, so that's B. 
I hope you guys are playing along at home. All right, good, good luck. Next up, which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? All right, so here we have some polynomial expansion or something like that, right? X squared Y minus, we'll just do a zap zap here, plus, plus, because it's two negatives. Then we had minus that, so we're just going to zap that to a negative. And then we have, this was a negative, so this is now a plus. Now that looks nice. Zap zap makes everything easier. X squared Y plus X squared Y is 2 x squared y minus 3y squared, uh, and that's plus 3y squared, so that just cancels out. And then we have plus 5xy squared, so plus 5xy squared minus 3xy squared, so that's plus 2xy squared. So that's 2x squared y plus 2xy squared. 2x squared y plus 2xy squared. That is c. The answer is c. Woo, doggy. We are just speeding along. H equals 3a plus 28. Point six. A pediatrician uses the model above to estimate the height h of a boy. In inches, ayo, why was that ayo? In terms of the boy's age, a, in years between the ages of two and five. Based on the model, what is the estimated increase in inches of the boy's height each year? Okay, so h is what we're looking for. What is a? Well, let's just, if it's between two and five, we'll just fill it in. h equals three times two plus 28.6. And then we have three times three plus, we'll just put quotes, and then three times four, plus quotes, and then three times five. All right, so this this is actually, I don't even need to do that, but we'll just do it anyway, because this is going to be static. So we're going to have six, nine, 12, and 15, plus 28.6. But that doesn't matter, because what it looks like is he's just increasing by three each time. So A, the answer is three. Moving on. We're going to speed along. See how fast we can do this guy. Seven. The formula above gives the monthly payment M needed to pay off a loan of P dollars at R percent annual interest over N months. My master's degree coming out for this. No, hopefully not. Uh, which of the following gives P in terms of M, R, and N? So this gives the monthly payment needed to pay off a loan that is related. A loan of P dollars. So let me just put this is loan at R percent. Where's R? Where's my boy? I'm going to put percent interest probably. Uh, yeah, annual interest over n months. So I'm gonna put months. This is just for me to help understand this. Which of the following gives p in terms of? Oh, so it just wants me to basically just rewrite the equation. So it looks like the whole thing is multiplied by p. So this is quite easy. Watch this. M. Oh, the whole thing is times p. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm gonna divide both sides by p because that's what I want to do. And then we're gonna have m over p equals that whole thing. And then we're just going to divide both sides by M and then take the reciprocal. That's such a complicated way of doing it. I don't want to do that. I can do it the original way. It's just this is a safe way for my brain right now. This, what I should do is just divide everything by this. So basically it's M, we'll do a little division sign, divided by that, which is going to be the same as M times with a dot. Okay, we don't use X's past eighth grade in America. Come on, you Brits. Okay, so M times the reciprocal 1 plus R over 1200 to the n minus 1, and we're going to divide that by r over 1200, and then 1 plus blah blah blah, it doesn't matter, just look for the answer like that. So we have r over 1200 at the top, so that's not it. We have r over 1200 on the bottom, and that r plus that to the n minus 1. This is the correct answer. What's this m? Uh, yep, m times that. So the answer is b. We're just chugging along here, like a little choo-choo train. Bam! Next up, if a over b equals 2, then what is the value of 4b over a? So let's just do a equals 2b, so therefore 4b over a equals 4b over, what is it, just 2b, which is equal to just 2. Oh, that's it, 2. I hope you're already seeing the comparison between the, the final GCSE there and this. 3x plus 4y equals negative 23. 2y minus x equals negative 19. What's the solution to the system of equations? System of equations are always really fun. So they've done this on purpose to mess us around. We're going to do 3x plus 4y equals negative 23. And then we're going to write this the correct way, which is negative x. Except I want these to be, I already know what I want to do. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by times 2 because, you know, you can do that. Uh, so let's just do uh, 4y here. That's a positive. And we multiply it by 2. So this is negative 2x. And then over here we have... We've multiplied it by 2. That is now, what, 38? Yes, negative 38. Let's not mess this up. Now, we multiply through everything by a negative 1, and that makes this a positive. That makes this a negative, so these cancel out, and it makes this a positive. So we have 38 minus 23, which is 15, equals, those canceled out, 
and it looks like we have 3x plus 2x, and that's 5x, which means x equals 3. So if x equals 3, just plug that into the original equation, and we have 9 plus 4y equals negative 23, and we're going to bring that back over there. We have 4y equals 23 minus 9 is 32, correct? Yeah, negative 32, and that means y equals negative 8. So the correct answer is 3, negative 8, which is one of the options. We're just going to select B, scan it in with that Scantron, and take a sip of tea. We're 10 minutes in. Next, for the function g defined above, a is a constant, and g power 4 is 8. I don't know how to read that right. The function g of 4 equals 8. What is the value of g of negative 4? So a is a constant, and g of 4 is 8. So let's just do g of 4. Uh, that way we can solve for what x is, right? g of 4 equals a is a constant, so a 16 plus 24, which means... And g of 4 is 8, so that means 8 equals 16a plus 24, which means that negative 16 equals 16a, which means a equals negative 1. Now, if a equals negative 1, we just have to plug that in to this equation. So, with g of negative 4, let's just write g of negative 4 is going to be equal to negative negative 4 squared, and that's plus 24. Now, negative 4 squared is going to be positive 16, but then it makes it negative. So we have negative 16 plus 24, which means that g of negative 4 is going to be equal to 8, positive 8. That is an option A. Now, this is one where I feel like I do want to check my answer to make sure, because we do have a negative 8 there. I do think I did the correct thing here. This is embarrassing if I didn't, but let's just check it over really quick. AX squared. Correct? Yes. Okay. I'm fairly certain that's right. We're just going to have to move on. 11. We got that right there. We've got, in the equations above, B and C represent the price per pound in dollars of beef and chicken, respectively. Let's respect the chicken. Respect the chicken. X weeks after July 1st during last summer. There's too much information. What was the price per pound of beef when it was equal to the price per pound of chicken? So this is beef and this is chicken. What it wants us to do is, when were these equal? Well, let's just set them equal to each other. 2.35 plus 0.25x. Uh, we're going to do equals 1.75 plus 0.4, oh god, don't cringe at me writing off on the page here. So 2.35 minus 1 point, let's just do 1.75, right, minus that, correct. 5 minus 5 is 0, 23 minus that is, I was going to write si uh, 5, but it's 6, right, 60, yep, good. So we're at 0.6 plus 0 equals, we're going to minus 0.25x from both sides, so it's that, and we get 0.15x. So what we're going to have here is divide both sides by 0.15. So we have 0.6 divided by 0.15 equals x. Now, if you divide by 0.15, that cat is meowing. It's the same thing as multiply. So what is 1.5? I mean, 0.15 is 3 twentieths. So basically it's saying 3 fifths divided by 3 twentieths. Now what we can do here is say 3 fifths times 20 over 3. The 3's cancel out, the 5 cancels out until it's just a 4. I've done something heinous! <laughs> I've done something very wrong! Alright, we'll have to try again. This time I'll give myself more room. 2.35 plus 0.25x equals 1.75 plus 0.4x. Let's bring that over here. That means we're gonna have, I want the x's on this side, we have negative 0.15x equals, whoop, that's gonna be negative have I done the math wrong? No, I did it right. It's 0.60, right? However, we can just get rid of these because they're both on the same side. So we have the same thing, 0.15. Now, I'm not allowed to use a calculator for this section. I feel like I'm floundering like a dum dum ding. I could have sworn I did this correctly, but look at that. If I can't do basic division, what's going on with me? 0.6 divided by, so we have 0.6, and this is not a square root sign. It's the long division sign. Leave me alone. 1.5. We move the decimal over two times, so it's basically 15 divided by 60. The answer is four. What have I done? Let's just put four in. When X was four, which is uh, four weeks. Oh, ah, what was the price? What was the price per pound? So we just found X is equal to four. Let's just put four in. Four times 0.25 is one plus 235. That's gonna be 335. The answer is D. Let's just plug it in here just in case. We have uh, four times 0.4 is going to be 0.16. Uh, 1, 6, that, 235, yeah, 335, let's do it, D, the answer is D. A line, how long do I have for this one? 25 minutes, all right, we, we don't have much time left. How many questions? Oh, sh A line in the XY plane passes through the origin and has a slope of 1 7th. Which of the following points lies on the line? A line on the XY plane passes through the origin here and it has a slope of up 1 over 7. Which of these is on the line? 0, 7, absolutely not. 1, 7, 
Absolutely not. 7-7? Seven, seven? Absolutely not. 14-2? Yes. The answer is D. We really don't have time to check our answers because there is not a lot of time for this one, okay? That is one thing that's uh, similar. Not a lot of time for both these tests. If X is greater than 3, which of the following is equivalent to whoosh? Okay, so X has to be greater than 3. Let us simplify that. We have 1 over 1 over X plus 2 plus 1 over x plus 3. This looks horrendous. Oh my gosh, what? Let, let, let's just make sure that the, the, they're similar, you know? Uh, let's look look at the bottom. So what we can do here is x plus 3 over x plus 2 x plus 3, and we can add that to x plus 2 over x plus 2 x plus 3. I'll just throw those around. And that means we're gonna have 2x plus 5 over x plus 2 x plus 3. Don't forget this is all over 1, which makes it essentially x plus 2, x plus 3 over 2x plus 5. Is that an answer? Well, this is going to be what? x squared, we have plus 6, then we have plus 5x. Yeah, it's going to be this one right here, b. Bam! Margera, let's do it. Okay, 14. If 3x minus y equals 12, I believe you, what is the value of 8 to the x? over two to the y. All right, well, uh, I think what we're gonna do here is do one of those things where we say negative y equals 12 minus three x, and then we have y equals three x minus 12. Well, if we know that, what is the value of this? Dude. The value cannot be determined from the information given is an evil answer. I don't think there's, I actually think that might be the answer because look at this. If I put that in there, we have eight to the x, which we don't know. There's too many, we need one more like equation to solve that. Eight uh, x over two, to the three x minus 12, which is the same thing as eight to the x over two to the three x divided by two to the 12, I think. Either way, this, this has to be solvable, right? It must be, eight to the three x. So eight to the x over two to the three x. You can't separate this though. I'm just gonna put D and come back to it if I have time. I'm a bit upset. What is the value of that? Four to the four? Why would they not? Yeah, these don't make sense. Jesus, we don't have time. If ax plus two times bx plus seven equals 15x squared plus cx plus 14 for all values of x and a plus b equals eight, what are the two possible values for c? So a plus b equals eight. So that means that a equals b minus eight. Wrong. Eight minus b. So we have to then put that in. What are the two possible values of c? Why don't we just ignore what's going on over there and come back to 15x, can I just do 15x and do plus one over here? And then do 14x, so minus, minus 14. Yeah, I think this works. So at this point, x can't be 14 and x can't be negative one. I don't think that helps me. It says, what are the two possible values for c? Where is c? Ah, oh. I literally assumed I knew what C was. But I, what did I assume C was? I assumed it was one. Oh, but it has to, you know what? We're gonna come back to this one. I don't wanna waste all my time on that one. I know I can do it, but I, I don't have time here. If T is greater than zero and this is true, what's the value of T? T squared equals four. Oh, this is, this is the part where I have to start writing in things. T squared equals four, which means T equals plus or minus two, right? However, how do we write that? It's, it's plus or minus two. We have to write that down right here, I believe. So we're just gonna write, uh, there is no option for that, so I'm gonna put two or negative two? God dang it. Oh, because it has to be greater than, okay, the answer is two. We circle this two, move on, 17. A summer camp counselor wants to find a length x in feet across the lake. The lengths represented by A, B, E, B, B, D, and C, D on the sketch are determined to be 800 feet, 1400 feet, 700 feet, 800 feet, respectively. Segments A, C, and D, E intersect at B, and that and that are the same measure. What's the value of x? Moving on, I'm moving on to the next one here, 18. Uh, 18 is that, according to the system of equations, what's the value of x? Okay, let's solve for x immediately. Multiply the top one by negative by two, and we have two x plus two y equals negative 18. Multiply everything by negative one, and you're going to have negative x, this cancels out, equals positive, oh God, why am I, I need to stop rushing. Two x plus two y equals negative 18. And then under it, we're gonna put x plus two y equals negative 25. Multiply everything here by negative one, you get that negative, negative x, you get the zero, and this is negative seven. So x equals seven, put the seven in, seven plus y equal, oh, what is the value of x? We've already done that, seven, the answer is seven. And that's number 18, so we're gonna pick that, seven. So my camera just died somewhere in between 19 and 20, I don't actually know, but I hit pause as soon as I figured it out, set my cameras back up, and I'm about to hit start before going any further, bam. Okay, so I've got 30 seconds, I've just got 200 for this one. 
Also, it's two zero zero. I've done that correct uh, incorrectly. Two hundred. We'll just scratch that out. Next, honestly, I have twenty seconds to go back to seventeen, and I think number fifteen. Fifteen is either I usually pick A or C if I don't have time. I really don't have time. I'm gonna pick A. If I could pick C for this one, seventeen. I'm gonna pick a number that's here, 700, 800, or 1400, or 1800. I like 800, because eh? this one's 200. You know, it doesn't matter. None of these are actually the right answer. And we're about to have time, eight, zero, down. Okay, well, that's it. Okay, done. Stop. We've now finished part one. First impressions, this is way not enough time. Compared to the GCSC, where I did feel like I was a bit rushed, this one, 25 minutes, Jesus Pete, okay? That is not enough time for anything, okay? I can barely drink a cup of tea in that amount of time. I'm just checking to make sure I'm not going crazy. It does say 25 minutes, 20 questions, which I should have made sure I checked that earlier. That means you get a little bit over one minute each. You don't have much time to check your answers. And, you know, so far I had to guess one of these. I just randomly picked. And this one I just put in a random number that's there. So that's what you get, you know, when you're, when you're in this type of mess. Okay, so now we have to move on to the next portion, which is assumably going to be also not much time. Here we go, the calculator one. Oh God, 55 minutes. Now I'm upset because that's gonna take a while. I also don't have a calculator on me. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into it. Reset and go. Okay, this time I'm going way faster because I really don't have time to mess around. Where's the other sheet? All right, I have another Scantron here to go through. I don't care about my name, okay? We'll put that in later. Uh, John runs at different speeds as part of his training program. The graph shows his target heart rate at different times. On which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing then strictly decreasing? I mean, it looks like in between 40 and 60. That, that seems pretty good. So I'm gonna put 40 and 60. I'm not even gonna think about it. We don't have time to think in this one, okay? Next, if y equals kx, where k is a constant, and y equals 24 when x equals six, 24 equals k6, so k equals 4, um, when, uh, what is the value of y when x equals 5? So y equals 4 times 5, which is 20, so that's c. Looks like there's construction happening outside my house, I love the sound. The ASMR, construction, living in London. In the figure above, lines L and M are parallel and S and T are parallel. If the measure of angle 1, which is right here, is equal to 35 degrees, then what is the measure of 2? 2 is going to be 90, I mean it's going to be 180 minus one, whatever one is, and one is 35, so 180 minus that is going to be 145, right? 135, there it is, D. Next, if 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14, what is the value of 8x? 16 plus 4x is, 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14? Okay, just put 24, which means that 4x equals 8, which means x equals 2. So what's the value of 8x? 16, which is C. Wow, I'm really, I'm really clocking on this one, okay? We're not, we're not messing around anymore. Which of the following graphs best shows a strong negative association between D and T? Well, this is a positive one. This looks definitely like a strong negative correlation. That one, not so much. We're gonna go with D. I love these bubbles, man. Fill in the bubbles. One decagram is 10 grams. A thousand milligrams is one gram. Duh. A hospital stores one type of medicine in two decagram containers. Based on the information given in the box above, how many one milligram doses are there in a two decagram container. Okay, so they store one type of medicine in a two deca container. Based on this information, how many one milligram doses in two decagram container? So here we have one decagram. One, we'll put big D, is equal to 10 G. And then we have one, 10, we have one G is equal to 1000 mg. So it's saying how many mgs are in two of these? Well, we have 1000 times 10 which is gonna be 10,000 times two, which is gonna be 20,000. So that's gonna be D. And then, like I said, we've got a rush. Bam. Seven rooftop solar panels. Sounds fun. The number of rooftops with solar panel installations in five cities are shown in the graph above. If the total number of installations is 27,500, what is an appropriate label for the vertical axis? Okay, the number of rooftops with solar panels is shown. Five cities are below, and this is the number of rooftop panels. So what is the appropriate label? So nine plus, Five plus six plus four plus three point five, and that's going to be equal to twenty twenty-seven point five. Twenty roughly twenty-seven point five. Which is good. Oh, so clearly it's got to be one, two, three to be in the hundreds. So number of installations in hundreds, it's B. Cool, cool, cool. For what value of n is n minus one plus one equal to zero? So n minus one. The absolute value of that equals negative one. That's not possible. There is no value. There's got to be D. Way number nine to 10, refer to the following information. Sure, the speed of a sound wave in air depends on the air temperature. The formula above shows the relationship between A, the speed of a sound wave in feet per second, and T, the air temperature. Sometimes I feel like I'm reading so fast, I'm reading out loud that I'm not actually taking it in. Which of the following expresses the air temperature in terms of the speed 
of a sound wave. The formula above shows the relationship between A, the speed, so A is speed, and T is temp, which is weird, because that's not supposed to be, that's usually time. So it says, which of the following expresses the air temp? Ah, in terms of that. So let's just bring it back. So we have A minus 1052 over 1.08 should be the answer, correct? And it's A minus 1052 over 1.08. It's gonna be a number A, letter A. A, my favorite number. At which of the following air temperatures will the speed of sound be closest to 1,000 feet per second? So, what, oh, Fahrenheit. So what, the, no, no scientist is using Fahrenheit. Which of the following air temperatures will the speed of sound, which is A, be closest to 1,000? So if I put the temp of, let's say, 50 in. Oh, this is where I need a calculator. God, I've really ruined myself. It's 1,000 plus, let's just do 1.08 times 50. That's going to be what? We add a zero at the end, and it's going to be 40 and 20, which is 204, right? That is, I'm doing math real bad here. Oh, no, I'm not. 204 plus that. Oh, it's negative 50. It's negative. Oh, so it's 1,000, 1,052 minus, oh, God, this is where I really need a calculator. You know what? Oh, I don't even have the calculator downloaded. Oh, God. All right, come back to 10. Come back to 10, we'll skip 10 right now. Which of the following numbers is not a solution of the inequality, 3x minus five is greater than, you know when you run out of space on your phone and it, it deletes the calculator app because you're dumb? All right, so which of the following is not a solution to this inequality? Let's put five over there and we have 3x is greater than or equal to 4x plus two. Let's bring that back and we have negative x is greater than or equal to two and then if Unable to install. I don't even have space to install a calculator. That's just great. X is less than or equal to negative two. So which of the following is not a solution to the inequality? I mean, I got negative two, I'm having an issue. Let's just put negative two in there. If X was negative two, we'd have negative six minus five, which is negative 11, is greater than or equal to negative two, negative eight minus three is negative 11. So that actually works. Let's do negative five, um, negative 15, Minus five is negative 20, and that's gotta be greater than or equal to, right? It has to be either that for negative five, negative, negative 20 minus three, which is negative 23. Is negative 20 greater than negative 23? It is, gosh darn. Negative three then, gosh, we're running out of space. Here. Negative nine minus five is negative 14. Is that greater than or equal to, let's put that negative three in there, negative 12 minus three, negative 12 minus three, which is negative 15. The answer is yes, that is. Okay, is it negative one? Is it really the last one? Let's do negative three, negative three minus five, which is negative eight, is greater than or equal to, let's put that negative in, negative seven. Oh my God, that's gotta be it, that's it, it's A. Okay, that's number 11, because we skipped one. Number of seeds for each, in each of 12 apples. Based on the histogram above of the following, which is the closest average number of seeds per apple? Okay, so we have three times two, we have five times four, we have six times one, we have seven times two, we have nine times three. That's 27, 14, six, 20, and six. We have 12, we have 32, we have 46, and lastly, 46 plus that is gonna be what? 73 divided by six, seven, eight, nine, 12. 73 divided by 12, is gonna be about six, right? Like, we, we just gotta rush, man. The answer is gonna be six, which is C. Make sure you fill in those dots. 13. A group of 10th grade students responded to a survey that asked which math course they were currently enrolled in. The survey data were broken down, as shown in the table above, which of the following categories counts for approximately 19% of all the survey respondents. Females taking geometry. Females taking algebra two. Okay, so it says, which of the following accounts for approximately one-fifth of all the survey respondents. So which one of these is about one fifth? Well, now we, have, we really need a calculator, okay? This is this is pretty rough. Oh, no, it isn't, here we go. 150 plus, we have 310, 310 is N. So we're looking for something that is about a fifth of this. What is a fifth of 310 uh, divided by five and you get like 60, right? About 62. So we're looking for something that's about 62, but a little bit less because we're looking for 19%. So, oh no, really? They're really doing this to me. 62 is 20%. This is where you really need that calculator. So the answer is probably gonna be either 59 or it's gonna be 57. This is where I'm wasting all of my time. How many times does this go into it? Let's just say it's really interesting. I can't believe I'm getting hung up on this basic stuff. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't have a calculator. If we have 5.2, I'm assuming that means it, it's like one over 5.2 is like, it's not 20% because one over five is 20%. So one over 5.2 is, 
18% or 19, but that's the only option that's so slightly close. So it's got to be the 59 option. The 57 one would have been a bit too small. C. Oh, uh, man, I, I can now understand. All tests are difficult, okay? All tests are validly difficult. The table above lists the length to the nearest inch of a random sample of 21 brown bullhead fish. The outlier measurement of 24 inches is an error. Okay, let's, let's pretend that doesn't exist. Of the mean, median, and range of the values listed, which will change the most if the 24 inch measurement was removed from the data? Oh, this is so annoying. All right, I've given up. I'm gonna get a freaking calculator. I had to turn the Wi-Fi back on. That's why I couldn't do it. Eight plus nine plus nine plus nine. I want you to know this is the literal worst. I think this is clearly a trap to make me waste a lot of my time. This is not how you're supposed to do this. That right there is the total in this thing, 262. Now, if we remove that 24, uh, let's see. Will it affect the mean, the median, the range the most? Oh, it's, oh my God, it's the range. Oh my God, that's so simple. Oh my God, bring it back to the timer. You absolute idiot. The range is right there. C. Oh gosh, got tricked. They got tricked, they tricked, got tricks up, gosh dang. All right, 15, 16, refer to the following information. Bam. The graph above displays the total cost C in dollars of renting a boat for H hours. What does the C intercept represent in the graph? C intercept right there. Uh, well, that's when you had zero hours. That's the start. The initial cost of renting a boat. Yep, that's the one. Bam, 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 A, moving on. Which of the following represents the relationship between H and C? C equals 5H. Uh, let's see. If that was true, then this would be 10. Incorrect. C equals 3 fourths uh, to 3H plus 5. That would mean that when H was 2, it would be 11. Well, that's correct, but what about when it's at 4? That would be 17. Okay, I've done two checks and I'm moving on. The answer is C. Sweet, we're not doing so bad now. Okay, uh, let's move on to 17. The complete graph of the function f is shown in the xy plane above. For what value of x is the value f of x at its minimum? So this is the function f of x. For what value of x is the value f of x at the minimum? If y is f of x, then the answer should just be this right here. So at what value of x? One, two, three, negative three. And that's the option, that's b. Moving on. Ba -ba 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 -ba. In the xy plane, if zero, zero, the origin is a solution to the system of inequalities above, which of the following relationships between a and b must be true? This is difficult, right? Okay, even if you're used to the British way of doing things, this is, this is still, Difficult, it's just multiple choice. Which of the following relationships between A and B must be true if zero, zero is a solution? Zero is less than zero plus A, and then we have zero is greater than zero plus B. So that means that A is positive and B is negative, which means that A is bigger than B. Yeah, A is greater than B, we're gonna go with A. Ta-da! 19, a food truck sells salads who would go to that food truck for $6.50 each and drinks for $2 each. The food truck's revenue from selling a total of 209 salads and drinks in one day was, wow, that's a good job, guys. How many salads were sold that day? Okay, so 6.5S plus 2D, and that's gonna be, they told they sold 209 salads, so 209 of these guys, and they sold a total of 209 salads and drinks in one day. So S plus D equals 209. And we know that 6.5s plus 2d equals 836.5. I'm glad I got my calculator now, because we did multiply both of these by 2, which gives us 2s plus 2d equals 418. And then we're going to multiply everything by negative. We get 4.5s. That's out, and then we get equals. And we're going to subtract 418 from that, which is going to be 417.5, correct? 17.5 plus, what have I done, plus 18. We're gonna use the calculator. Let's not flex the mental math on this one. 836.5 minus 418 equals 418.5. You see, that could have been a very easy mistake. 418.5, let's divide that by 4.5. Bam, thank you calculator. I appreciate you being in my life today. No more no more mental math flexes, on, not on this test. Alma, great name Alma. Alma bought a laptop computer at a store that gave a 20% discount off its original price. The total amount she paid for the cashier was P dollars, including an 8% sales tax on a discounted price. Which of the following represents the original price? Oh God. So she bought a laptop and it gave a 20% discount off its original. The total amount she paid was P dollars, including the 8%, so that equals the discounted so 0.8 original, I'm gonna put that, original, why don't I just put X? 0.8X, and then it's plus the sales tax, right? Oh, so it's plus 0 0.08, 0 0.8, why is it 0.8? Oh, because it's that, 0.8X, and then times 1.08, that should be correct. 
1.08. Whoa, which of the following represents the original price in terms of P? Oh, great. So that's gonna be P over 1.08. Gosh, you also have to divide it by 0.8. But why don't we multiply those things together using a calculator? Thank you, calculator, saved my life. 1.08 times 0.8, that's 0.864. It looks like 0.88 is, is a bit similar. Oh, it's right here, that's my answer. P over those two things, yes, okay. Don't get tripped up, buddy. Moving on to the next one. We only have a couple more left. I think I can do this in the time allotted very easily. Dreams recalled during one week. The data in the table above was produced. Stop this, I hate that. W was produced by a sleep researcher studying the number of dreams people recall. Group X consisted of 100 people who observed early bedtimes. Group Y had later bedtimes, still 100 people. If a person is chosen at random from those who recalled, what's the probability that a person belonged to group Y? Probability, here we go. So if a person is chosen from those who recalled at least one dream, so given, you've recalled a dream, what's the probability that they're in Y? So what's the probability of Y? That's the answer. We're given, looking for the probability of Y given the R. So that means the probability of this, probability of this given you know it's at least, at least in this category. Now I think this is actually an easy one to do probability wise because all you have to do is add up the, the things here. So given that it's in this, we just say, Let's see, 11 plus 68 is 79, right? 79, and then group X is 28 plus 57. 28 plus 57 is 85. The probability it's Y, given we're in this category, should be 79 divided by 79 plus 85. And 79 plus 85 is going to be 150 plus 15 or 165. So 79 over 165. Now I've done some bad math or something because, oh, 164. There it is, 79 over 164. And I'm fairly certain that's correct. We're gonna go with C. And hopefully all you guys are not making fun of me because last time I was bad with that probability problem, but I got it. This time, I used my own trick, okay? If you knew that trick, then fine. Good for you, I'm held, I'm proud of you. I wish I had more time for the non-calc, man. Annual budgets for different programs in Kansas. 2007, blah, 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 don't care. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Which of the following best approximates the average rate of change in the annual budget for agriculture? Natural resources in Kansas. The average rate of change in the annual budget for agriculture and natural resources in Kansas from 2008 to 2010. So which the following best represents the average rate of change in the annual budget from this to this to this? Well, it looks like we've increased by about 130,000 and then this one, oh, okay, just do the whole thing. Let's do the total. This is increased by about 130,000, 130 something. It's in terms of thousands of dollars. Add one, two, three. And yeah, it looks like 130. Uh, I'm gonna have to say. We're just gonna put D because I wanna move on. Of the following, which program's ratio of 2007 budget to its 2010 budget is closest to the human resources program's ratio of its 2007 budget to its 2010 budget? So which of the two ratios are very similar? So we're comparing it to the human resources program. That ratio, let us bring open that calculator because your boy isn't able to do million numbers here. 4051050 divided by the 2010 one, which is 5921, 5921. And then we got 379. The answer is 0. 0.68. So we're looking for 0. 0.684. What's gonna be similar to that? We're gonna just have to test them. What looks like an increase in a very small amount? Not this one. Highways and transportation. Let's do a one, four, six, eight. And we got a 482. Then we're gonna divide that right there. Divide that by 1773. I think I did this wrong. Uh, I'm apologizing already because this is not correct. That is nowhere near it. Your boy don't know his math. 14. And 14. Did I do this correctly? Human resources is four to five. What am I doing? Just keep going, keep going, Evan, keep going. Uh, 2007, 2010? Yes, okay. Human resources, we did that? Cool. 373, 904, divided by 488, 106. Nope, not that one. That one went up. Wait, I clearly did something wrong here. Let's just look at the options. Agriculture, we'll try that one. 373, this one's taking me way too long. The answer is, that's 0.82, so it's gotta be education. Education is B. I really didn't like that because that problem was a time vampire, okay? It just sucked up all my time. Now let's move back to the clock so I can constantly be alerted that I'm terrified. Which of the following is an equation of a circle in the xy plane with a center of 0, 4, and a radius 4 thirds and 5? So we have 0, 4, frick. Okay, so if I'm drawing this, it's gonna be right here is the start of it. That's the center of the circle. And a radius with an endpoint of 4 thirds and 5. So if I move four thirds up, so here's, that's four, right? Four, three, two, one. 
and a little bit over here, and then one, two, three, four, five. So it's gonna be around here. That's quite, that's quite a big boy. And it wants to know which is the equation for a circle. I don't know, I don't know this one. X squared, oh God, I can't remember the stuff for a circle, man. Uh, this, is, this is upsetting to me. Well, if it's zero, four, maybe it's X squared plus Y minus four squared, maybe, maybe that's it. I have absolutely no clue with this one. I'm going to put C down, because I usually do A or C, so we're gonna put C for 24, and I'm gonna put a star next to it so I know I can come back to that if I have any time. 25, the equation above expresses the approximate height h in meters of a ball t seconds after it is launched vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second. Hey, mechanics. After approximately how many seconds will the ball hit the ground? So, this is the approximate height, t seconds after it's launched with an initial velocity of 25 uh, meters per second. How many seconds will it hit the ground? So basically, when h equals zero. So, zero equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 25t. Let's just plug some stuff in. Okay, so when t equals four, it's going to be 16 times negative 4.9 uh, plus 100. So we want this to equal zero. Five times 16 is absolutely not going to get that because five times 16 is uh, 90. So that's not quite close enough. So four, not the one. 4.5 though, that might be enough. 4.5 times that, we're gonna have to open up the calculator again. All right, so if I do 4.5 times 4.5 equals times 4.9 equals, so it's 99.225, 112 minus 99 is not quite enough. That's gonna be 13. So why don't we do five seconds? At five seconds, it's going to be 4.9 times 25, which is equal to 122.5. So remember, 122.5, we do 25 times five. There's nothing bigger than five. I, I, it says approximately, approximately. It says approximately, I'm just going to have to, to it, it, it's gotta be five. It's gonna be more than five, but I guess it's going to have to be five because there's no other thing after that. Gotta freaking estimate with a calculator. Gosh dang, okay. Katarina is a botanist studying the production of pears by two types of pear trees. She noticed that type A produces 20% more pears than type B. Based on Katarina's observations, if the type A trees produced 144, how many pears did type B produce? A produces 20% more, and A produced 144, then 144 equals 1.2 times B. And then we divide 144, let's just put that in the calculator here. 144 divided by 1.2, the answer should be 120, that is B. That's a nice round number, isn't it? Ta-da! A square field measures 10 by 10. 10 students each mark off a randomly selected region of the field. Each region is square and has side lengths of one meter and no two regions overlap. Hooray! The students count the earthworms contained in the soil? Why? What are you, what are you doing? Go play some Fortnite. I don't know, five centimeters beneath the ground surface in each region. The results are shown. Cool. So, which of the following is a reasonable approximation for the number of earthworms to a depth of five centimeters beneath the ground surface in the entire field? It's 10 by 10. They mark off a randomly selected section of each field. Each region is a square and has a side of one. So, essentially, they've done one section, two section, three section, four section, five section. And there's still five more this way and nine more this way. Maybe what we can do is multiply this number, each of these numbers by 10 and then each of the numbers by two. So multiply each of the numbers by 20. And I think that would be uh, an approximately good estimate. So we're gonna use our calculator here and we're gonna say number of earthworm. We have the, yeah, the clock still going. Okay, that, just to terrify me, just making sure. 107 times 20 equals 2,140. Okay, it looks like the out of the options, let's do 150, 150 times, oops, 150 times 20 is gonna be equal to 3,000. So essentially it's gonna be like 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, 3,000. It's gonna be around C, which is 1,500. Let's bring it back to the clock. Bam, moving on. I'm getting this done early, just like the last one, okay? It's just that non-calc really messed me up, man. Really ruined my self-esteem. If the system of inequalities, y is greater than two x plus one, and y is greater than one half x minus one is graphed into the xy plane above, which quadrant contains no solution? So if this and this is graphed, which quadrant has no solutions? If y is greater than two x plus one, let's just make x a negative. No, let's x positive. When x is positive, so x plus, then y is plus. 
So that's cool. It says, which quadrant contains no solutions? All right. When X is negative, let's say it's negative one, then it's still negative. Then Y is negative. So when X is negative, Y is negative. Cool. With this one, when X is positive, let's just say it's five, then Y is positive. Not all the time, but yeah, X plus Y plus. And then when X is negative, let's just say it's a thousand, negative thousand minus one. When X is one, and so that means X is positive one, then it's going to be one half minus one, which means this is negative. So when X is positive and small, oh, that means it's gonna be quadrant three. Quadrant three is never used. Go for it, B, bam. For a polynomial PX, the value of P3 is negative two. Which of the following must be true for PX? Okay, X minus five is a factor of PX. What? Okay, so it's a polynomial. So it's something like x squared plus 2x plus 3 or something. So that means, let's just say it's x squared plus 2x minus 3. And if we make it 3, we're going to have 9 plus 6 minus 3, which is clearly not what we want because that actually equals 0. How the heck do you do this? What? x minus 5 is a factor of px? Oh, because when it's 3, it's not 0. So I don't think x minus 3 is going to be an option. The remainder when px is divided by x minus 3 is negative 2. I'm gonna go with D. I honestly have no clue what to do for this one. This is a bit upsetting. Compared to the GCSE, I kind of always knew roughly what I was meant to do, but these are these are not something I wasn't expecting. Okay, last one of this section is, which of the following is an equivalent form of the equation of the graph shown in the xy plane above, from which the coordinates of vertex A can be identified as content? Oh gosh, so it has to be like this from which the coordinates of vertex A can be identified as constants. It's one, negative 16. And that, if that's the vertex, then I like this. I'm just gonna go with D, okay? We're, we're at this point, we've, we've lost our will to live, okay? SAT is difficult as well. I'm not enjoying it. Let's move on. Next up, we have more of the fun ones where we have to write in the answers like this. A dairy farmer uses a storage silo. Of course he does. It's shaped like that. If the volume of the silo, oh, let's, let's pull up that sheet. Thank you, SAT, for giving me the cheat sheet that has all the reference numbers on it. There it is. It's all out of order, but I don't care. Pi r squared h. So pi r squared h. That's the volume of cylinder. And it says the volume is 72 pi. So that means 72 equals r squared h. What is the diameter of the base of the cylinder in yards? Oh, h is eight. So that means nine equals r squared, which means r equals three, which means the answer should be six because the diameter is going to be six yards. Bam, okay. The answer is gonna be six. We'll just fill in the six right there. I feel like I've missed some. Okay, it turns out I missed this page 31 first. Okay, so we haven't done 31. We did 35, that's cool. 31, Wyatt can husk <laughs> at least 12 dozen ears of corn per hour. Good job, Wyatt. Wyatt, are you doing that? No. And at most, 18 dozen ears of corn per hour. Okay, so at least 12, so somewhere between 12 and 18. Good for you, Wyatt. Based on this information, what's his job? A farmer! Uh, what is the possible amount of time and hours that it could take him to husk 72 ears of corn? Well, in between, it's gonna be 15. So if it says, what is a possible amount of time and hours it could take him? I mean, any number in between there is correct. Hmm, at least 12, and at most 18. Based on this information, what is a possible amount of time in hours? Well, 12 times six is 72. If we do five times 18, that's going to be 90, right? Five times 10 is 50 and five times, so 90. So that's way too much. So if he does that, it's going to be four. Four times 18 is, oh, that's perfect. Good job for, for that. So it's either four or six. So I'm just gonna go with five. It, it, I wanna do like four to six, but what is a possible amount of time? I think there might be three correct answers here. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to go with five for this one. I know it's either four, five, or six. So we're just gonna write five, and I'm the proctor, so I don't have a scantron machine, should be fine. The posted weight limit for a covered wooden bridge in Pennsylvania, relatable, we have a lot of wooden bridges in Pennsylvania, uh, is 6,000 pounds. The delivery truck is carrying X identical boxes, each weighing 14 pounds. I'm just gonna write 14 X. It passes over the bridge. If the combined weight of the empty truck and the driver is 4,500 pounds, what is the maximum possible value of X that will keep the weight of the truck, driver, and boxes below the limit? So it has to stay under 6,000. So what we're gonna do here is do 14x equals 1500, and then do, since it's a calculator here, do this and do 1500 divided by 14. The answer is 375, 375 pounds. Now I'd like to check that, but also I don't have the time. So we're just gonna write 375, 375.
five. Perfect. Don't you like bubbles? Number of portable media players sold. <laughs> Remember portable media players? iPods? A Zoom? According to the line graph above, the number of portable media players sold in 2008 is what fraction of the number sold in 2011? In 2008, they sold 100. 100 is what fraction of 160? 100 equals X times 160. So X equals 100 over 160. So thank you, calculator. Your boy can't do basic math today. I'm getting used to this calculator and I'm sad. Point. 625, which is 62.5%. Let's just check the math. Oh, it's 62.5% more. The number sold in 2008 is a fraction of, oh no, it'd be, it'd be 62.5. Oh, it's a fraction though. So, oh shoot. I mean, I could do 100 over 160, right? Why don't we just sort that out? It's 10 over 16, which of course is five over eight, five eighths. That's the answer. Ooh, okay. Five slash eight, five slash eight. Saved it. A local television station sells time slots for programs at 30 minute intervals. Uh, if the station operates 24 hours a day, every day of the week, what is the total number of 30 minute time slots the station can sell for Tuesday and Wednesday? Okay, 30 minute intervals. So how many 30 minute intervals in a day? 48. It operates 24 hours a day, sure, 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 every day of the week. So let's times that by seven. That's gonna be 336 slots per day. Let's just multiply that, right? 48 times so, 336, your boy can do math. Oh, let's bring it back to the clock. What is the total number of 30 minute slots the station can do sell for Tuesday and Wednesday? So times two is going to be equal to 672, and we're gonna move on. 672. Love a good Scantron, making this as realistically as possible here. 672, that's correct, I hope. Moving on to the last problem here. We have last three problems. We've, we've done 35, the answer to that one was six. We're now going to 36. Here's a big formula. For what value of x is the function h above undefined? So h cannot be defined here if the bottom is zero. Let's just make it so that x minus five squared plus four x minus five plus four is equal to zero. Oh, because this four, it's not gonna be as easy as I was hoping. That's x squared minus 10x plus 25 plus four x minus 20 plus four equals zero. That's gonna be x squared minus six x plus nine equals zero, which looks to be x minus three squared, if, you, if you're asking me, which means it's gonna be three. So the answer is going to be three. Bam, next up, oh my gosh, we're in the last two. Home stretch, we don't have much time left. What is the value of x in the expression? Jessica opened a bank account that earns 2% interest compounded annually. That's a good job, Jessica. Who needs Bitcoin when you get 2%? Her initial deposit was 100 bucks. She used the expression 100x to the t to find the value after two years. So what's the value of x in the expression? x, I believe, would just be the interest rate. t is the time. The, the value of x in this should be 1.02, I'm fairly certain, because it's 2%, and since it's compounding, it's gonna be 1.02. So that is gonna be 1.02. Bring in those bubbles, my friends. The underrated character Finding Nemo is here. Jessica's friend Tashan found an account that earns 2.5% interest compounded annually. Tyshawn made an initial deposit of $100 into this account. At the same time, Jessica made a deposit into $100 into her account. After 10 years, how much more money will Tyshawn's initial deposit have earned than Jessica's initial deposit? Round your answer to the nearest cent and ignore the dollar sign when gritting your response. This is it, the final guy. All right, so that means if our expression here is 100 times 1.02 to the 10th power, and we're gonna compare that to 100 times 1.025 to the 10th power. This is genuinely what my master's degree was on, like compounding interest and stuff like this. So here we go, fun financial mathematics. Bring out the calculator, my friends. I should have brought out my actuarial tables to help me with this one. 100 times 1.02, whoosh. Sorry, we're gonna, we're gonna bring out this thing. We're gonna do 100 times 1.02, and I'm gonna select that and pick 10. 121.899, I think that might be it, we'll, we'll, we'll try. Now the next one, we're going to do CCC, 100 times 1.025 XY, 10, 128.008. Now that, my friends, that, my friends, is gonna do it for us. What's 128 minus 122 minus 121.0008? 899. The answer is 611. $6.11 more. That is correct. We're at 6.11. 6.11. All right, so that is now the end of our thing. I'm fairly certain we've done this. We do have one starred. I did skip one. Number 10, we can come back to because I just want to write something real quick. Always remember to go back to the ones that you gave up on because you're a bit of a dum dum. Oh, it's this one. 
this this is not a fun one. So which of the following air temperatures will the speed of sound be closest to 1,000 feet per second? Uh, I don't know. Am I supposed to know how to do this? Mm -hmm. So that's the formula. So we want A to be 1,000. So 1,000 equals, so we're just gonna minus that. So we want negative 52 to equal 1.08 T, the temperature. So 1.08 times Oh, oh my gosh, divide 52. Oh my gosh, I think I got this. In the last couple seconds, I think I've got this. 52 divided by 1.08 equals 48.14. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was B. Put that B down there, bam. All right, bam, all right. Now, we, we also have one more in our small amount of time left this SAT that we starred, and that is number 24, if we can find it in this gobbledygook. There's the bay. Now, 24 is a circle. I can't remember the formulas of a circle, but I know it's like X plus something, y plus something, square them both, equals something. <laughs> However, I don't know what that something is. I think it's a plus. I think it's gonna be b or it's gonna be d. I really don't have much time left, so I'm really gonna just have to figure this out now. Maybe I should just put a. It's either a or c. I put c, but I like a because it has 25 ninths, and I feel like maybe they're trying to trick me, but look, that looks like a fraction. <laughs> I was always told never change your answer. If you don't know, I think we're gonna have to stop it there. Bam! We've now finished our SAT. It is now time for the arduous process of grading. Okay, let's see how I did. So I've got the test here. We've got D. That's correct. Easy to grade. You can see why it's enjoyed. Oh, what? 14 is D. That is depressing. What have I done wrong? And 15 is D. Wow, how did I possibly do this? Moving on into this section here. 16. The answer is 2. Good. 17 was... 1600, you know what, I guessed on that one, so that's my own fault. 18 was seven, correct. 19 was four fifths, or 0.8, good. 20 was 100, I put 200. How have I messed up so many? This one was easy, wasn't it? Oh, I see what I did wrong. It's two times five square root two. Oh, I did that. I'm so confused with how, how I messed this up. Square both sides. Oh, I forgot to divide it by two. Oh my god, oh, such a simple mistake, but you know, you don't got time, you make these mistakes. This is what happens. So number 20 was wrong. So that's one, two, and three, four. Four wrong in total, so we're gonna put minus four for the non-calculator section. Ah, that's not good. There's not many to get wrong. Okay, moving on to the next part. Okay, this isn't too bad. I'm getting all these ones right. Oh, wrong, correct, wrong. All right, we got two wrong so far. Why? I want to know what I did wrong. 22, oh, I was pretty confident in that. Oh no. 22, I put D. I thought that was pretty good, but the correct answer was B. Really? Well, I'm dumb. All right, 24. Oh, I guessed that. Oh my God, I was going to switch to that one. You know what? I should have just switched. Oh, that was another one I guessed, but hey, we tried our best. Okay, next up. What happened at 28, my friends? What happened here? What? No. <laughs> No, 28 was uh, not B, which is what I said, which was quadrant three. The correct answer for 28 was C, quadrant four. Gosh dang. 32, 107. How did I botch that so bad? Uh, 33, please give me a, there we go, five eighths, I'll take it. 34, we put 90, oh God. The correct answer for 34 was 96. Oh my God, that makes so much sense. At least we didn't get any more wrong to make ourselves cry. Yeah. Five wrong. Minus five, so minus five and minus four. Now how do we grade this? Okay, so now we just gotta add up all the stuff here. So we got 16 out of a possible 20. Not bad, because we had four wrong. So that's 16 marks. Marks, I'm getting the same marks as the points. It's points. So that's 16 for this section. And on this section here, it looks like we had minus five out of a possible 38. So that is 33. So 16 plus 33, one final problem we've got to do is 49. That's not so bad, I hope. So with a total number of 49 correct, I found this table on the internet, which will now tell me what my grade is. What is it? A 690. Can you believe this is not a joke? When I took the SAT when I was in high school, I got a 690 on the math portion. I haven't gone up, I haven't gone down. I was really hoping to break into that 700 threshold, but no, it turns out I'll always be a 690 on the SAT. Dang, how depressing. <laughs> but hopefully, uh, if you've never experienced the SAT before because you live in a different country, now, through this video, you understand how it is. Even if you know a lot of math, that time pressure really puts a lot of stress on you. you. You can make simple mistakes, and sure, you can learn how to take the test and be better at it, sure, but it's just one test. 
It is multiple choice, and boy, if you don't get a good score, you really can't get into a good uni. But also, at the end of the day, who the frick cares, man? 690, I'm a 690 boy. Maybe it's because it was just for the memes. 69. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> so to put it in perspective, to help you understand how the SAT grading system works, a 690 basically is about like a 7 or 8 on the GCSE scale, roughly. Not really a 9, probably a bit close to an 8. So I did about the same amount of good on each test. What does this mean for universities? Well, basically, if you get over a 700, you're like, woo, you're good to go for most any university. As long as your total of the reading plus the math is like above 1350 for the most part, you're good to go. But as long as you get a 600 on both the math and the reading portion, you're mostly fine. No matter where you go at universities, that's like good to go. And if you don't do that, you can just reset. If you took the SAT, please tell me in the comments how you did. And I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, it's been a really fun last two weeks. I spent a long time making these videos. And if you like them, you can be sure to give it a big thumbs up or watch some other stuff I made over here or here. Pretty good stuff, I'd say. I mean, I made it, so a bit biased. But uh, hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.